Before we get into it, I just wanted to thank you for following me into this tilted rabbit hole where we learn about the entrepreneur journey and all the magnificent and terrifying things that come with it. If you're an entrepreneur and you want to increase your brand exposure, network internationally, and gain insights, then follow the breadcrumbs in the show notes to my site where you can find everything you need to start your business, grow your brand, and accelerate your income today. I even have a live show every Monday that you can attend. It's free brand awareness and exposure, and you get to meet some really cool people on the show. It's such incredible value, and you don't have to pay a penny for it. Now it's time. Let's jump straight into the rabbit hole. Welcome to the Entrepreneur Spotlight, Isaac. It is amazing to have you here today. Um, Do you want to just tell everybody your name, your name of your company, and what you guys do? My name is Isaac Mostovich, and the name of the company is Isaac Mostovich Limited. It's about me. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I had all kind of fancy names, but I found out that uh, people are calling me, people are not calling my company. True, faithful to uh, my education um, in uh, brands, I stick to my name. Uh, What I'm doing is I'm helping uh, business people, business people who um, are talented, are skillful, they are proud about who they are, but somehow the bottom line of their business shows something different. Sometimes, you know, it's kind of an insult to their skills. I'm doing everything that I have to do. My skills are not there. And my uh, the results are not there. Sometimes they almost reach bankruptcy. Sometimes they're there. Uh, the business is not doing, not doing well. And this, I'm helping. Here I'm helping them. Uh, my, my approach is... First of all, I respect those people. Those people are skillful, are able, but uh, throughout my experience, and I'm talking about 45 years of experience, most of those failures come from the path that is not them, from the path where they act automatically. They act because of um, the certain conceptions. They act because, um, uh, because they have certain mental blocks. They act because of um, a certain mindset that imposed on them. They, they, they don't know even where this mindset came from. Kind of, they got it secondhand, read something in the newspaper or on the Google or, um, or inherited from uh, who knows where. It's not them. And it's very, very difficult to get rid of all those blockages. These are blocks that you have to get rid of them. Once we get rid of them and we discover that they just hide a treasure under them, not what you what you think is what is there, it's just the opposite, then because they are talented, they say, oh, this is the case, I know what, exactly what to do. So remove your, your automatic part of, the automatic part of you, start to be yourself. And what I say is, very easy to understand, very difficult to execute. Uh, I'm not there. Uh, I can tell you that I was educated this way since I was born many, many years ago. In the last 50 years, that's what I'm doing day and night, what I'm supposed to do day and night. I have my uh, uh, lack of courage. That's too much that uh, I want a little bit of comfort. I want a bit bit of time from kind of time for myself. I'm not fighting any longer this kind of um, uh, uh, misbelief yet. I'm still advancing. I'm still advancing. I have friends of mine who uh, advanced further. So I tailor it to, I tailor my services only to business. Because it's easy, easy to measure. You do something right and you sit in the bottom line. Yeah, absolutely. So it's easy. It's a, I think it's a, in a way, it's a, if somebody wants really to, uh, to face himself, stop acting automatically, start to express yourself, business is a good place where you, where you can start. Yeah. 
Oh, so that's that's actually really amazing. So what kind of clientele are you interested in working with? There are two uh, answers to it. It means two parts of the answer. First of all, because we are talking, uh, because I'm talking here business. So I can't say I'm a consultant and my fee is X and pay me my fee regardless because you are going to feel better. My fee derives at the end of the day from the end results, from the hard yes. end results. That means you have to see that it, my clients have to see that after a, a pre uh, design, uh, a predefined period of time, short period of time, I'm talking. Uh, uh, usually, I tell them uh, one year, and I want and I want to uh, to see this, um, to reach my results after half a year, yeah. working according to a plan. That means yeah. they can build themselves out after each meeting. Uh, after half a year, they have to see the improvement. They have to see profit. Now, the question is, how much profit, money-wise, how much profit they make? Extra profit yeah. they make because my fee has to be derived from this, regardless if I call it um, a consultancy fee, regardless if I call it a bonus, or whatever name mm -hmm. it's money. You have the one dollar, I can take 10 cents, I can take 20 cents, but I cannot take two dollars for one of the one dollar that I brought you brought to your business. So, uh, uh I'm looking for uh, usually for businesses who either are able to make $1 billion a year in, uh, in profit, or mm -hmm. that they have the potential to make it. Um, I had a case uh, with a company that didn't, have, didn't make a penny because they didn't have the right uh, clients. Mm -hmm. So uh, they had a fantastic product, but they, didn't, uh, but they couldn't sell it. We found the client, we found the solution. Yeah, yeah, two cases like this, we found the solution. And uh, we found the clients, and then I made a boom, a crazy, um, the business went like crazy. Like, like, they sold it like, like, like hotcakes. And then I could say, okay, I'm working on, I didn't work for free, but I'm work, I worked on a minimal wage, but my uh, share of profit was bigger. I took uh, different, um, uh, different, um, uh, structure of my fee but at the end of the day i got a very nice fee i'm still living out of this fee because they uh, the contract was that after we bring them to profitability we keep on getting the bonuses for a certain period of time a few years uh, so this is easy um, relatively easy you sit with the client to make a plan tell them these are the milestones these are how we are going to measure it and we sit together and we see that whether we can uh, reach the, this milestone or not. Uh, the more more uh, more difficult is to find the clients. I, I call them I call them my gems uh, because I came from diamonds. And the um, uh, just statistically to find out one carat of gem quality, you have to dig out twice the Wembley Stadium. That's the size of earth that you have to remove to find out one carat of gem quality. Wow. It's the largest. It's the largest earth um, earth moving in the world. Mine, diamond mines is the largest op uh, operation in terms of earth moving. You have to see the. Um, That's uh, crazy. I didn't the know. That. You had to see the machines. It feel so tiny next. To the wheel of the wow. uh, um, of the bulldozers, and when I look at, I get my clients from the, basically from uh, in most most of the time from social media. Yeah, and I say social media has hundreds of millions of people. I'm on LinkedIn, for example. I don't know how many they have today. Six hundred, seven hundred million people. Out of this six, seven hundred million people, I have to find out. 20 gems, and they're the proportion. And I don't want to have more than 20 gems, and if you give me 10, I'll be happy also. Um, so this is, the filtering is so difficult. And the tools that we have are very, 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 very difficult to find. Because number one, you go to LinkedIn, and I say, okay, I want 
somebody in the leadership position, I don't know, CEO, uh, founder, um, um, uh, uh, owner, and so on. Company, let's put it with the, uh, put some figures, 50 people and more. Not one, uh, uh, not, not solo pro uh, preneur, but something that has an established business, 50 people. Yeah. And that's the maximum you can go. You can limit geographically the 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 the, the place where you want to search for them. Yeah. And uh, LinkedIn will find you. People according to this description, and then you figure out that one um, is doing is not uh, has dreams. He doesn't have a business. Yeah. If they have a business, they have it in the kitchen. They have no workers, so it means what people uh, you are, you have no control about what people tell no, you. No, don't. Them. Yeah. So and you have to accept them, and to realize that they are not your clients, and you collect and you collect collect a lot of garbage yeah. like in the, the diamond pine until you find you find the gem. The other yes. problem is come to people and tell them things are st stink for you. Are you not? How do you feel? Not, don't you feel insulted? Your business is not a reflection of your skills, uh, of, uh, of your capacity. How do you feel? Who is talking about it? Who is ready to talk about it Who is yeah. in public? To 600 million people that it never, it never knew about it. I have a business, that stink, a stinky business. I'm a great person, but I, think, I want to find the first one to, to be that brave and say it. Yeah. So uh, it's tough, it's difficult. It's difficult to find them. Huh? Like I tell you, I have, if you want to talk about failure, I have millions of failures for one success. And it's, you know, it's okay. We all so, do, we all do. How many, how many holes have you dug before you actually find the diamond? It's hard, especially yeah. depending on what kind of clientele you're looking for, because the more the more exclusive clientele, they're very hard to tap into as well. They're very hard to get to. Yeah. But you only need a couple of them, and then you're good yeah, to go. I told them, uh, you know, you are because I'm in in the uh, social media, I'm public, and people see that uh, people try to sell me their knowledge. Well, I don't I need more. Give me one name, one good name, and I'll pay you as much as you want, because the one name is going to pay me. They are paying. They are paying heavy money. They are paying in the in the tens of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars per month or per year. So, how much you want? A thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, five thousand dollars, no problem. But guarantee me one name. Interesting. Yeah, I can't. Interesting. I, I like that approach. Defend. They have. I didn't find yet one, one who, who define a system of finding my gems. I just um, finished this morning a talk with the uh, with some uh, with a guy who was very helpful to define my message. So I told him, okay, that's yeah. nice. And then he told me, okay, this is what we are doing. And then I look at it and say, and he said something very clever. You have to reduce your niche. Because if you talk to a broad niche, you can't write yes. much. No. But if your niche is, is limited and you find the real clients of yours, they're going to pay you heavy money. Yes. Well, it's kind of like if you look at my services, I have got them, they start from £17 a month all the way to 60,000 pounds a year. So mm -hmm. it just depends on, I've got a service for pretty much everybody, but I'm going mass market with my mentorship program. And then I go into a niche of a niche of a niche. I'm looking for a very, very, very specific kind of clients for my Mark 10 program. Because mm -hmm. that program is incredibly intense and not everybody can handle it. It's also expensive. Yeah, it's very it's, and it's, it's very expensive, intense. And expensive to you as well because yes. the, the pressure that is on you, the pressure, the, the, pressure, the time off, the time that you have to invest into it, the effort, the, the yes. cognitive, the emotional effort that you have to put into it, you, you yes. deserve it. 
If it works, it works. I thought that's very nice. How do you, how do I reach my niche? Because, but like I told you, I want a certain size of a company. I don't want to take my, from somebody money that he'll never be able to recover. Yeah, no, I I agree so, with that. Uh, and a certain emotional, a co- cognitive perspective that they have. They have to be brave. They have to say, I am not going to give up on this insult. I'm not going to give up on this um, frustration. I'm going to break through it. Yeah. There's this commitment I have. Can you find me? Those few people? You know, not wherever you want in the world. Because I'm working in there. I work in the States, I work in in Europe, I work in Israel. I work more with the West, less with the Eastern part of the world. Yeah. Somehow um, Japan disappeared from my my scope in the last uh, 20 years. (laughs) Although it's an excellent market, but it's there the language barrier. Yes, yes. I work with everybody from the USA all the way across Europe and all the way to India. India is where I kind of stop because it's... Any beyond that, the time zone is just too, it's just too different. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it, but no, it's tough. I'm, yeah. It's a I'm, lot of I'm, work. I'm limiting, I'm limiting my time zone. I'm limiting the time I'm working regardless. So it happens to me that um, I have a, take a call at 11 o'clock at yeah. night because of the time zone different. But if I have to work with somebody, no, no. Because I'm not going to kill my uh, evenings because I have a client half the way of the world around, find out somebody else. Yeah. So I had a case with um, a guy that uh, called me. I told him, well, that's fine. Let's talk. He wanted uh, to talk on um, FaceTime. Well, FaceTime is great. Let's do it. Let, let's make an appointment. And then I called him. No, no, no. I'm now busy. He's a, he's a doctor. And yeah. um uh, yeah, he's a physician and he has to uh, uh, he, uh, to run his hospital and uh, whatever after hours by him in Los Angeles. I tried it once. I tried it twice. If I'm not important for you enough to stop and spend time with me one hour a week or two, uh, one hour every second week you can't be my client. Uh, we have been now created a, a group of ex- executives who uh, uh, we call it virtual uh, virtual board. People come with their problem to this virtual board between us, and uh, we try to help each other. And it works very very successfully because we are open. We are, uh, there's no hidden agenda. People are not ashamed to say say that things don't don't work. Uh, sometimes you can't bring it to your board. Uh, this kind of you have to always to show your nice face. Yeah. Here they uh, uh, they they are very open. The um, uh, this virtual board takes for me a whole day, once a month. Wow. Not to count the in between because we felt that once a month, especially the with nowadays events, because we are Israelis, all of us are Israelis, and some some are. Suffering more from the war, some are drafted, yeah. some are uh, just the business doesn't go well because they uh, they have to be uh, because they 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 are working in Israel and even those who are working abroad they can't travel uh, so uh, I feel uncomfortable traveling now so uh, uh, it uh, I was surprised to see that everybody is there the time. Allocate, uh, allotted for it is four hours. Not, I'm not talking about traveling time, but just to sit on board is four hours work. It's, we everybody is expected to come to arrive on time and to leave on time. You can't come late and you can't leave early unless you notify beforehand. Yeah. Somebody just have to has to catch a flight. Yeah. You can't change the entire timetable of the of the airport just because you have a board meeting. So leave after uh, half an hour earlier. Or sometimes we move a little bit um, the the time. Uh, the time We start half an hour earlier, we start two hours, an hour earlier, an hour later, yeah. just to accommodate to everybody. 
No, but, absolutely. So, I think I think that works but, really, really well. But the 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 commitment is there. If the commitment yeah. wouldn't it wouldn't have been there, I wouldn't pay for it. I wouldn't spend my time on them. They might be the absolutely. brightest people, but they're not committed. Yeah. No, you have to have committed people in your on your team. Otherwise, it just doesn't work. Commitment has to be there. I I I I'm I'm, I'm known to be one who is always late. <laughs> I and can relate they, uh, to that. <laughs> But but when I make a meeting with people, today I had two meetings, mm -hmm. and I knew one meeting was, for example, 11.30, my time. 11.25, I was there. I stopped yeah. everything, and I was there. I stopped everything just to accommodate to our meeting today. Mm -hmm. I didn't finish what I, have, what I have to do. I know that I'm going to go to sleep for one hour late tonight. Uh, two hours later, I hope my wife doesn't hear it because she and uh, because um, I wake her up when I come to come to bed, uh, and I, even though I try not to switch on light yeah. and so on, but when I make a commitment, this is a commitment. This is important for me. No, that's, that's really really important for business. So I just wanted to ask you, why did you start your business in the first place? That's what I was doing since I was. In um, uh, since ever, <laughs> I, 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 I was educated since I was born this way. I was doing it since I was seventeen in different uh, different aspects. For example, something that you don't know about me, I mm -hmm. practiced karate already for more than fifty years. Oh wow! And that, and if you ask me what karate is, karate is about by, uh, facing your mental blocks and. Steer them away. Facing your conceptions, steer them away. Don't act automatically. Be very conscious. Be very conscious also, also cognitively and also emotionally. What, it's, this is what we call the oneness. You have to be one with your conscious and your, your, with your emotion. 52 years and I'm not there. Far from there. Every year that goes, and for, um, I, met a, uh, I met a friend of mine two days ago. And he uh, treated my wife yesterday and he told me that he was so happy to see how I progressed. Yeah. And I felt and I felt terrible when I practiced with him. I could tell you what was wrong. No, not that I felt terrible, but I could tell you now uh, I manage with my emotions. That's who I am and that's it. But tomorrow I'll be better. And so so, so uh, uh, and sorry. my work was the same way. Yeah. I went into the diamond business and I was frustrated. I asked people questions, simple questions. Yeah. For example, uh, first question I asked, I understand how I have to price my diamonds. I bought, my diamond cost me $100, 100 I have to sell for 200 otherwise I lose money. But how on earth comes somebody spending thousands of dollars, sometimes even more, does know to distinguish between a, a diamond and a piece of glass. How does it know, does he know that this diamond will do the, do, do the job? Actually, what kind of a job is the diamond supposed to do for him? Yeah. And people look at me to this kind of, what are you talking about? They know. When you talk to those people, they don't know. Yeah. And this is kind of a simple question. I'll uh, give you another example, dead stock. Uh, yes. When you go to the diamond, uh, diamond industry, actually it works on overwork half of its stock. That means if you, um, people are making money, they're making money on only half of their stock. Sometimes it's 40%, sometimes 6%, but it's about wow. half of the stock. The rest is dead. They wow. manufacture. You wouldn't, you wouldn't think that though. That's what, but, but now, when you talk to people, this is a, a given. This is a given. We have that stock. And the Beers got their first shock in the late 90s, uh, 1990s. And they went through a um, uh, social, uh, through the uh, strategic review. They hired a, a group of consultants, which were not mm -hmm. the brightest people, but they told them the truth. So they looked at their, at their books and they realized that they had, I think at that time, they had about $5 billion of stock. And I said, 
what is this stock? Well, this is uh, our stock. How did you price them? The fact that you can't sell them means this, the, the net value of this stock is zero. Don't put it at $5 billion. In one, so in one moment, they reduced the value of the beers by five, by $5 billion. Wow. They came to realize that they were, were their stock was $5 billion less. So I didn't have $5 billion in, the, in that stock when I entered the business. I have had much less. But I said, what is this kind of that stock? And I took a group of independent jewelers, good jewelers, people who had large stores, but one store only or two stores only. That means that they were at the help. It, it was kind of, it wasn't kind of managed operation, kind of a chain store or yes. something like this. And I told them, okay, let's sit together, look at my dead stock, and what can we do with it? Yeah. I remember the reaction of one of my best jewelers. I'm so sad he passed away because he, uh, when I worked with him, he made all the jewelry for my family. Oh. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful pieces. The, I told him, okay, okay, have a look. And he was sitting there and he was pulling one lot after another, one diamond after another, and he piled it up. And I asked him, what are you doing? He told me, you opened me the Al Alibaba cave because he could see money in this dead stock. Yes. Not only, not, and I had not many people, but I had these few jewelers within no time i cleaned up this dead stock not not cleaning up i made money on it it means my dead stock was valued at 100 i sold it for 150 they made uh their name and they uh, had they didn't do kind of a standard jewelry they could express their uniqueness they built up their brand and they made money and they made yes. extra money because you know what brand yeah. is. Yes, of course. That that's when you can actually put your prices up as well. Yeah. So everybody was happy just because I So you've been this. you've been doing branding in a way forever. I was uh, I was trained by one of the best brand professors in the world, by Leslie Deschamps. I don't know if you heard the name. No. Uh, he was um, at the um, Chartered Institute of Marketing. Uh, he is sitting at the Senate. I think he's still sitting on the Senate. On the Senate, and he's their brand name. Their Mr. Brand. Nice. Yeah, uh, I think uh, among the ten top at the time when I worked with him twenty years ago. Well, yeah, twenty years ago, he was considered among the ten best brand experts in the world. Wow. Uh, among the best. Three in the in Europe. So so imagine like imagine if you never met him, your whole career would have been completely different because you've got what so many businesses don't have, and that's what sets you apart from everyone else because you understand brand from a it's, it's part of your core. It's it's so it's it's like your it's like your lifeblood because it's there. You know, you know what I told him at the end of the day? He started to explain to me what brand is. I told him, Leslie, everything can be branded. Everything is, yeah. is brand. Because if, when I look at what I'm, I'm doing, I'm not working automatically. I try not to work automatically. I not, not try to rely on misconception, rely on um, truth that I read in a, in a junk a junk newspaper on a Google or found on Google. Or, yeah. I, I don't want to insult you, but on a women's magazine, no, you know this, uh, this type of uh, this, uh, yeah. this type of uh, knowledge. Uh, uh, I um, uh, remember asking him when I was working on my PhD. I asked him for um, some books on customer behavior, on more on yes. the psychological side of it. Yeah, he gave me one book. And told me, book is not that great, but you know how many references he has? That's the value of this book. And he was right because he knew me. I was, I'm going to look into the depth until the end, until I'm not, uh, until I know exactly where this idea comes from. I'm not satisfied. Yeah. I can tell you one secret. In my uh, PhD, 
that I'm using two theories that uh, I can justify them because uh, my knowledge is broad and I'm happy. I know that it has a certain yeah. basis, but for, um, the, ac academia is very narrow. There are certain uh, types of, of knowledge that they won't accept. Yes. And the uh, I'm bringing it from uh, Judaism. I'm bringing it from um, uh, from knowledge uh, lies deep that lies deep in Judaism. I have to give them a, a, a three hours lecture that just to extend the, explain them the concept. Okay. And they know. So I try to avoid it. So I told them, listen, I use this model because this professor. I remember one model was the. Um, uh, uh, was by a certain professor, uh, Jean-Noël Kapferer. I don't know where he got his, his knowledge from, but he's a name. Anybody, anyone who is in marketing, anyone who is luxury knows Jean-Noël. So and, uh, I picked his model. Where he get it, got it from, I don't know. Is this model right? Yes, I can justify it for myself, not on academic level. But I, I, I hid behind him, behind his name, and here, <laughs> here's the model. So I was brought this way. My business all the time. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. Where are they? Where where is me? And where is the my? Where is the uh, uh, auto, uh, automatic automatic me and not me? That uh, that works there. And uh, that's what I told my people, uh, my clients. Where are you? And what are you doing automatically without even thinking? Just yeah. because. And I think that my business career is already more than 45 years. Something wow. I've learned. Something yeah. that I've learned. I'm there? No. I know how to ask questions. I'm experienced to uh, find out those conceptions and those uh, uh, and, uh, uh, mindsets and yeah. those and, uh, uh, mental blocks. I can pick them up quite quite easily, especially when we talk about business and not uh, things that are deeper. Once you pick them up, you start to play with them. And once people start to feel, hey, I'm making here a mistake. Yeah. And so I ask them, what are I going to do with it? And my clients are the gems. They start to realize that they are not insulted by the results. Yeah. They are insulted by, by their shortcoming, by not of being course. there. Yeah. At that moment, they'll change. You can help them, give them an idea. But yeah. it's them. But it's them. You know, the, the, nicest, the nicest compliment I... I two, two compliments I got in my life that I still remember. I was um, teaching many, many, many years ago. I was um, a basic school teacher, teaching because I had to do uh, my military service and that what my military service more yeah. than uh, four, almost 45 years ago. And a boy came and the teacher told me, I took, uh, I didn't teach in class. I, uh, I did them uh, um, special work on one-on-one -on, -one on, uh, on, uh, on uh, students. Yeah. And the teacher told me, told me, look, this is a nice boy, but he, we are already a few months into, uh, into class and he can't feel and write. Primary, first class, first grade, what do we do? Well, come, bring him to me, start to talk to him. And uh, the story was that he came from a um, small neighborhood away from Jerusalem, about half an hour, half an hour drive. Yeah, a boy, six, seven years old, had to go on him, on himself three buses to come to school. Wow! And not that it was difficult, but he was shocked. Yeah. All of a sudden, he comes to a big to the big city. It was overwhelmed. So he talked, started to talk about it, and as we talked, I started to play with him and the. Uh, I discovered that he knows how to read, he knows how to write, he writes with um, terrible uh, mistakes, but he writes. 
I took away his fear. You are able. You. That's all what I did. Yeah. yeah you can go to. A month later, the teacher tells me he. It's a different child. I told him, okay. Twenty-five years later, I'm walking in the street, and a couple stops me, and there with a stroller with a, 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 two or three babies. Thank you. I didn't realize him. I didn't. Feel, I didn't recognize him. Oh my so god! So he told me, "You are the one who helped me read and write." He told me the story. I remember the story, and he came twenty-five years later. Well, thank you. And I told him, "I didn't teach you anything. You know it. I just took away the cloud yeah. in, from front uh, front of your eyes." Oh, that's a be- that's a beautiful story, though. And this made me proud. Yeah. The other the other story was in my uh, now I'm not anymore in diamonds, but um, I remember I had to fight to bring uh, uh, computers into the into the business. The business was large. The business was, yeah. was big, and you had to write to uh, so many activities that doing it manually. Yeah. Uh, was always um, guarantee that you are going to miss here or there, mistakes yeah. and everything. So you had to do it, put it on a computer, to put it properly. And that time, there was no, there were no programs. You had to, I had to hire a programmer to write it down. And I told him, I need this and I need that. And programs were not that developed. So we had to develop, uh, yeah. develop a program. It was a tough, a tough job. Took us two or three years to write a program to reach the level properly, and on top of it, the other partners told them, "You can do whatever, you want, but you don't change the system." Even though they could do a different, because of uh, the flexibility of computers, you could do, you could run the business in a much better system. No, I'm yeah. keeping, I'm, I'm staying with the old system. I just put it on computer and. Uh, I left the business. I come back. Yeah. And then one of the partners uh, told me, you know, not what you have done. I do A and B and C. This today, A, B, C, and it's done. I told him, listen, I had to fight on it 20 years earlier or 15 years earlier yes. to put it on uh, to put it in place. <laughs> now you adopt it as your idea, which means that my message went through. Because when you feel that this is your idea, you are going to fight for it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Who, cares? Who cares if I didn't really get, get, get the compliments? <laughs> that is such good advice. So I've got two more questions for you. If you had unlimited resources, unlimited time, unlimited money, unlimited people, organization, everything, what world problem would you solve? Always the same thing, looking for concepts, looking for um, uh, mindsets and breaking them. And I enjoy it. I enjoy it. I, uh, listen, in, when I was in academia, I wasn't affiliated with any any university. Yeah. I, I had my I had my ment- my mentors. I was working with my professors. But uh, when I uh, uh, when I finished my PhD, I I was in the, on the conferences. Yeah. Without any affiliation, I didn't look for my career in the academia. I just enjoyed present my uh, presenting my um, my ideas. And the, uh, I remember vivid, vividly uh, we sat in INSEAD in uh, Fontainebleau in, in uh, France in Paris. Yeah. And in a conference, four hundred people. And the uh, uh, the um, there was a panel, and uh, they asked if somebody wants to ask a question. Uh, I have an advantage. I'm wearing, wearing a skull cap. I'm wearing it all okay. I'm standing up. I'm standing out. So, yeah. you know, when they look like this, oh, this guy is, is different. You with a skull cap, what do you have to ask? So uh, I asked them a question, a good question that they didn't have yeah. an answer. They didn't have an answer because they didn't think, because there is a solution for it. But I exposed a problem that they had, all business schools have. Yeah. The way they recruit the 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 the, 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 the professors the, the, the lecturers, 
Yeah. And the uh, the, the the entire the the the, the, the entire academic uh, uh, structure, which is which is wrong. So I asked him the, the I asked him the question, and the guy told me he was the dean of the of uh, inside. He said, "You want me to commit commit suicide?" Because what I told him is stop researching, start teaching. Because if your goal is to educate the future managers, make sure that the future managers will do management properly. Give them yeah. the tools, give them the tools, give them the training that they'll become good managers, better managers. If you write a research, you have to justify your research by showing how this your research paper that nobody reads yeah. makes them better, make them better manager. Oh, wow. So actually, what I told them, anyone who you, whom you recruit has to stop researching. Yeah. One solution and start teaching. So that's what he told me. You want me to to commit suicide because I uh, I'm, uh, I won't have a business a business school. There, <laughs> there is a, there is a solution more complicated, yes. but that's it. But everybody remember this this question. Next year, um, we had this, the same the same conference. That time it was in um, in Saint Petersburg. And I'm coming in, and uh, I am not afraid. I'm not kind of a third, fourth class because my people, my mentors, are the top tier. Yes. They're, they're one in one is a vice president of the conference, and one, and uh, so I sit with them on the ta- at the table, <laughs> and I say, "Hey, you are still alive." I told this uh, this <laughs> in, and everybody knew. What I'm talking about, everybody. Oh my gosh! Like, so that's my nature. I enjoy it. I enjoy the. Uh... No, that's amazing. That's amazing. So, if you had one parting gift of wisdom for the audience, what would it be? Be yourself. Be yourself. It's difficult. This is uh, this. Uh... Be yourself. I love that. <laughs> because uh, you are, believe me, I then uh, very rarely that I find stupid people. People who are really uh, okay. Some some have to uh, to to go to uh, mental men, mental home that uh, they, they need psychologists. And, 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 and. But I'm talking yeah. about normal people. No yeah. people are intelligent. Are intelligent. Are capable. Uh, are okay. The reason is the problem is that straight jacket that they put on on themselves. Yeah. But take off the straight jacket. Be yourself. Don't rely on truth that. I'm based. Don't rely on stories. Be yourself. Absolutely and, love that. That yeah. is so okay, true. Okay, and this is a life mission. And this is a life mission. You can improve. Rarely, I find people who 24/7 that what they do. They want move from here to there without being themselves. They don't act automatically at all. And still, what they yeah. ask them to tell, I have so much to go. So. It's fantastic. It's great. It's worth living for it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, my God. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. This was absolutely amazing. You've got, and I can't wait to do our next one because that's going to be loads of stories as well. well I'll be oh. all by then. It will be with your success. <laughs> no, we'll be doing, we will be doing another one very soon. So okay. thank you. Thank you so much for coming on the show. You're most welcome. You can listen to this podcast and many more on tiltnexus.com, which is our free platform for entrepreneurs across the world. See you on the Nexus.